All right, thank you everybody for your patience. Just wanted to leave some time up front for anyone who might not have gotten set up yet on Community Edition. Uh, welcome to Appian Europe's hands-on lab this year. I'm very excited to be having you guys. This is the only one we are doing, but it's gonna be an exciting one packed with a lot of cool new features. My name is James. I'm the Senior Manager of Community Experience Product here at Appian, and really excited to be bringing the presentation to you uh, today. A few things I wanna kind of say up front. Um, firstly, this is gonna be an interactive activity working with the Appian platform. We have some helpers from Appian here, uh, some of our developers, solutions consultants who can help if you get stuck, but at the same time, don't feel too much pressure. This is an activity that will be recorded, will be made available. So if anytime you get stuck, feel like you're falling behind, just kick back, enjoy the presentation. It's something that you can pick up when you come back later. All right, so now to get started, uh, what are we actually gonna be doing here today? So um, as you saw, the title of the presentation is around saving the planet, so that's a pretty lofty goal. We'll give it a shot in this 90 minutes. Um, who here in the room is familiar with the term ESG? Can you see a show of hands? Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of hands. So I might be explaining something you're already kind of familiar with, right? So ESG, also known as environmental social governance, is something that's been pretty hot in the business sphere. And it's a really, really deep topic, so we won't get into all the particulars. But one thing you can think about is ESG represents a business's impact on the environment as well as society at large, okay? And that can be qualified and quantified in a lot of different ways. You can take this concept of ESG and marry it with something that's pretty familiar in the financial services space called KYC, or Know Your Customer. And if you think about that, what Know Your Customer is about is, if you're a financial services institution and you're gonna start working with a company, you might like to understand more about them. How averse are they to fraud, et cetera? Do they kind of associate with any maybe unscrupulous organizations? Another data point that you can understand about a company you wanna work with is their impacts on the environment and their sociological impact. So ESG score is something that can enrich the KYC process, which is why a lot of uh, these different financial services companies are starting to score and assess different companies' ESG posture, okay? So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be building a KYC-esque application that allows for customers to apply from a public portal, submit an application to your business, and then the name they enter on that application, we are going to use in a robotic process to go and grab an ESG score for that customer from a public website posted up by s and So, gonna be covering a lot of features. I think it's gonna be exciting. Um, and if you, again, if you run into any issues, feel free to raise your hand, and we have assistants that can come and support you. Sound good? All right, so let's get started. For those following along, I hope you have your Appian Community Edition environment up and ready. First place we're going to head to is the Appian Designer. So one fun thing about this is it's going to be entirely from scratch. So this is something you can do on any environment running the latest version, Appian 22.4. We're gonna start at the top here clicking new application. Um, before I do that though, a little bit of appreciation for the new and improved design experience for those who have been around. Getting a lot of glitz and glam into the new style and everything makes it feel a lot more of a joy to use, in my opinion. So, creating this new application, I'm gonna call it Customer Application, something simple like that. And then it's gonna do the prefix for me. And Appian's actually gonna take care of a lot of the stuff I need to get the basic application set up, like the different folders, groups, documents, and everything. So I just need to click save, and it's gonna drop me right into my application and ask me where I want to go next. Okay? So for this one, we're gonna actually start with a record. So I'm gonna click new record type, and then here, I'm just gonna call this something simple. I'll keep the name short so we don't have to be typing too much today. Let's just call this app. Go ahead and create that. It's gonna pre-fill my security for me, just like my application, so I can click save. And now I'm in the record type designer, so I can start filling out my data model. So when I go to tell us about your data here, one really cool thing that came out in the last quarter is codeless data modeling. You know, if you've been working with the Appian platform for some time, there's a few different objects that allow you to work with data around complex data types and data stores, but now I can just work with records. So I'm gonna go, I wanna start from scratch. It's gonna select the data source that it wants me to use. And then 
it gives me a few prefab fields and a few commonly used fields. So I'm actually gonna take advantage of those. I see a name and a description over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug those in to my data model. And then next to the description, you can see a plus button there to insert a new field. I'm gonna click that. This is where our ESG score is gonna go. So let's call that ESG score, just like that. That's gonna be a number. So I'm gonna change the type to a number integer. And that's all I really need to do for this activity here. I'm gonna click next, next again. And then I'm going to go ahead and save changes. I'll let Appian automatically create the database table for me. And there we go. I now have my data model. Now from here, you can see on the left-hand menu there's a few different places you can go. We're gonna go right to record actions here. So click record actions. And it's gonna allow you to generate your record actions. So let me hide this real quick. Okay, that's okay, I'll leave it there. Let's generate that. And it's gonna give you a few different options that you can do. We're gonna go ahead and just click create. I'm good with all the defaults for now, so I'll click next. And it's gonna tell me what objects Appian is gonna build for me to allow you to create the record action. Go ahead and do generate action. All right, so in that amount of time, we've created our application, created our database, and created a process to create new entries to our database. Let me go ahead and save changes at the top, and then I'm going to go back to the application designer. Okay, so I'm gonna say that that's gonna kind of round off our bedrock for the application. So now we can start building some of the cool KYC features that I was mentioning, right? So the first place we're gonna start is a portal, okay? Appian portals is something new to this year. In the past, when you built experiences in Appian, it was for your authenticated users. But now with portals, you're able to publish interfaces directly to the internet and meet your customers right at your front door, right? And the really interesting thing about portals is it feels very native, right? You're building an interface within Appian just like you build any other interface. With 22.4, there's a design object to publish the portal. But the interesting thing is that portals actually run separate from your environment, which is a good thing. When you think about a portal, this is something that can receive a lot of heavy traffic from customers or different influxes out there on the public internet. So you don't want that to necessarily have like a direct impact on the resources that run your business environment, right? So with all of the low-code design, what happens behind the scenes is this portal is uh, published to a microservice architecture. It allows it to elastically scale up and down and meet the resource demands of your customers, okay? And to do that, we need to give a, the portal a way to talk back to Appian, okay? And how do we make Appian talk to other things? We use integrations and we use APIs. So in order to get started with that, we're gonna start right there. We're gonna build an integration, then build an API for that integration to connect to, all in Appian, and that's what's gonna allow our portal that's in this elastically scalable structure to communicate back to our environment. So let's get started with that. Now one thing that's always great with integrations is making sure they are secure. So we're actually gonna take a quick detour over to the admin console, so click the uh, site navigator or the affectionately known waffle up in the top there and open up the admin console. And then all the way on the left here you can see authentication and underneath authentication there is web API authentication. So let's go ahead and click that. We are going to create a new API key. So we'll click create here and I'm just gonna call this CA portal because it's for authenticating for my portal. Now, we need a service account. So I'd recommend you create a new one. Go to create service account. I already have one created, so it's gonna yell at me for using the same name, but go ahead and type ca.portal. And then, once you have that, you can click create. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill mine in right here. Cool. So now we have a service account, and that's the user that we're going to look to for what privileges it has inside of Appian, okay? Now, before we go further, I just wanna say the next page, it's gonna present us an API key, okay? My recommendation is do not close off that page just in case something happens, you accidentally copy something and you lose your API key because that's gonna be needed to do the integration. So again, I'll click Create. Has my API key there, I can copy it to my clipboard. Just leave that page there, you'll thank me later. Okay, now we'll go back into the application I'm gonna go into the build here, 
And then I'm going to click New, and then Integration down here at the bottom. Okay. Now, with integrations, you don't want to necessarily specify your credentials every single time you create an integration, right? So we're actually going to create what's called a connected system, which allows us to set kind of defined parameters for a bunch of different integrations. So I'm going to create this new connected system. It's going to be of type HTTP, so just a generic one. And then I'm going to call this one as well CA portal. Okay? Now scroll down to the bottom here. It's asking me what kind of authentication do I want to use, okay? I am going to select API key. And then here, the header name, it's important. When you're integrating to an Appian environment, the header is always going to be Appian API key. Casing is important, so mind the casing there. API is all caps, the rest is sentence case. Now, that thing that's still on your clipboard, one will hope, you can paste that right in here. And that's going to be your API key to provide a secure connection between your portal and your Appian environment. Cool. One last thing is we need to provide it a base URL. Okay? Where is this system going to connect to? So I like to go to the top here. You can see I have my system's URL up here. I'm going to start kind of around where it says suite, because it'll just make it so I have to type less. Grab all that, copy it, and then paste it in here. Almost done. So we have suite. But since we're connecting to an API on the Appian platform, we're going to go web API. And then I add the slash here as well. That makes it so I don't have to remember to add the slash when I'm creating the integrations. Cool. So we have our base URL. We have our API key. We can achieve an authenticated connection. So I'm going to create that. And it's going to take me right back into the integration object I was creating. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do CA, and again, let's stick with the short object names. No one likes typing. We'll do new app, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and create that. Cool. Now, what this integration is going to do is, again, the portal is allowing someone to enter in details about their application and enter it into our system. So, for those familiar with integrations, that's a post call. Okay, we're posting to the other system to create information. So first, I'm going to start off with the relative path here. We haven't created the API yet, but that's just going to be new app. All that matters is when we go and create the API, we just keep that the same. It could be banana, but we're going to call it new app. For the method, I'm going to go ahead and change it to post, just like I was mentioning before. And now we've got to provide the integration the information we want to post. Okay. So I'm going to open up this right-hand pane here, and I can see my rule inputs. So what I can actually pass into this integration to make it work, right? Plus sign up here at the top. I'm going to create a name field. And then I'm going to create a description field. So for those who remember, these are the two fields we added that were auto-suggested for the data model, OK? but not the ESG score. That's going to come later. So how are we going to pass this information into the API? It's actually very simple. Go ahead and put down here in the request body some curly brackets. Open those up. I'm going to type name and map that to name. Makes sense so far. And then description. You want to mind what you're typing here. If you want to make it line up on either side of the equation, make that line up to description. And that's it. That's the integration. I'm going to save those changes. One thing that's important, though, is that we set up the connected system, we set up the API key, but we haven't given the service account we created access to our application. So one thing we want to make sure to do is back in our application, that administrators group that you don't remember creating, because Appian created it for you, we'll go ahead in there, and we're going to add a member, ca.portal. Select that. Add them in there. And now, when the service account comes into the Appian platform via the API, it has access to our record which has our data. So we can write the information and read the information back out. 
Great. Now, that was one side of the equation. So the portal is going to use this integration to connect to the appian platform. But what's it connecting to, right? We need to create that connection endpoint to allow the integration to connect there. So first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to create a constant object. So if you go new over here, let's create a constant. We're going to call this CA new app PM. PM, I like to suffix like that for process model. This is going to point at the process that creates new applications. So just like that, you can open up the type, select process model, and then we're going to find that new app process model that, again, Appian generated for us. And that's all we need there. So go ahead and click Create. Next, let's go to New. And now all the way here at the bottom of the greens, New Web API. So integrations and Web APIs are kind of like two sides of the same coin. An integration can connect to a Web API. Right. So it gives us a lot of templates. Like, there's a lot of things we could do with a web API. We could query a record. We could download a document. This one is going to start a process. So if you look at create here, there's a start process option. Let's go ahead and click that. And then it wants a little bit more information. So it wants that constant. Good thing we created that. CA new app PM. Let's stick with simple names. New app. And if you remember back when we made the integration, we gave it an endpoint to connect to. Now we're filling in that endpoint. New hyphen app. Now the integration will have a place to connect to. OK? Let's create that. It's going to pre-fill my security for me. Thank you. All right. And so the way Web API works is when the integration call is received, you can run all types of logic to process the request. Okay? And it's going to prefab a good amount of this for us because it knows, like we said, that we're starting a process. So we need to make a few changes to this to make this work for our use case. First thing is if you notice in process parameters, it's converting the JSON that's sent from the integration into Appian terms. Okay? I'm going to cut that onto my clipboard, OK? So that's now on my clipboard. And I'm going to type a bang local variables. Just select it when it comes up. Let's go ahead and put the comma in there now so we don't forget it later. And then let's open up this local variables. Still on my clipboard, I'm going to type local bang request body. So instead of passing that name and description just right into the process, I'm going to first save it into this local variable and then pull out the information and put it into my process. OK, so let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hit Enter, and then our good old friends, the curly braces, create that. And what you didn't see is when Appian generated the process, it gave us a variable to use called record. Okay. And what that record is, is it is our uh, customer application or our app. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to use that record. Okay? And we want to fill it with the information from our request. So what does that look like? If you just type app here, you'll notice at the bottom it's actually suggesting the record we created earlier. Okay? So we can use that in our expression. I'm going to click it. And then I'm going to put some parentheses here, just like that. OK. So I'm sending a name. I'm sending a description over the integration. So what I'm going to first do is type name. And look at that. It's suggesting the name field from my record. Oop. Maybe I clicked the wrong one there. One second. Name and click. Sweet. All right. So what do I map to the name? I'm going to type that local variable that I'm storing things in, request body dot name. This is where it's important what you typed in your integration lines up, because if you messed up the key or something, it might not map correctly. Let's do it again for description. Request body dot description. 
All right. And that's everything we needed to do. OK? So now we've exposed an endpoint. Go ahead and save changes. That will allow our portal to communicate back to our environment and publish the data for the record. So uh, this is a good time to test things out, make sure our plumbing was set up correctly. So I'm going to go into the integration object that I still have open for CA new app. Let's do something simple. Hello, world. OK. Open this pane again. I'm going to test that request. And it seems it was successful. So far, so good. I'm going to go to my record, the CA app record. Click list. And when it creates a record for you, it automatically creates a grid that you can view your information from. Open the record list. Hello world is there. Good. We've made it so far. The integration, when provided a name and description, will create a record entry in our database. Awesome. With that, it's going to take a brief moment. I can maybe take one question while we allow people to catch up to this point. Oh, you're, you're running into an issue? Too fast? OK. I'll try and slow down for the rest of the presentation so that it can, it can be easier to understand. Cool. I'll leave that up on screen for a sec there. Yes. OK, sure. Yeah, I can zoom. How's that looking? Any better? OK. One thing is if you are in a position where it's difficult to see the screen, I will show you the presentation is being recorded, and you will be able to consume it after the event as well. All right. Now, we've been kind of doing a lot of structure so far, right? Building a data model, building integrations. This is in service to what comes next, right? So now we can start working on the portal. So let's go back to the customer application here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new interface. So this is going to be the interface that our users see in the portal. Let's call it new app portal, just like that. Go ahead, click create. All right. So where to start? You see there's some templates over here on the side. And I'm going to select one of them, the one column form, just like this. All right. A few pre-filled things. Let me change this form header to some style things. So I'm going to call this uh, new application, just like that. And then this one, let me call this application details. All right. Now, with a portal, you don't input any information. All the information is made on the interface. So for that reason, we're going to flip over to our expression mode. And we're going to create, just like we did for the web API, some variables for our portal's data. The way I like to do this is I'm going to highlight the whole thing, Control-A or Command-A, depending on Windows or Mac. Highlight the whole expression. I'm going to cut it onto my clipboard. And then I'm going to bring back my friend, local variables. And let's type out some of the local variables we'll need. We're going to need a name. So local bang name. We'll need a description. And then one other thing is that when they submit the portal, I don't want it to just be there. I want it to be obvious that they submitted it. So I'm going to create a little toggle here. I'm going to say is submitted. Okay. 
That's going to be set to false to begin with, right? Because when you load up the page, it's not submitted. All right, finish all that. And now, hopefully it's still on my clipboard. Paste that back in, and we're back to normal. All right, next thing is there's a cancel button in the form template. I don't think we need that for a portal. So I'm actually going to delete that whole secondary button here. Let's see, just like that. And then this cancel rule input, the portal won't like that because we don't provide information into a portal. So I'm going to delete the rule input there as well. All right. Last few things to touch up from the expression side, I think it'll be easier if we do it here, is this first section layout, you can see there's a section layout, a section layout, and a button layout. This first one I'm going to use for after you submit the portal. Okay, what do I want to show them? We're going to keep it simple. I'm going to do called show when here. So when should this section show? I'm going to say just my local variable is submitted. This section, show it when is submitted is true. Okay? So what's going to go in there? Let's make a text field. So you can do a bang text field, just like that. And then I'm going to provide it a value. Again, real simple stuff here. Submitted in double quotes. And then I don't want them to edit this, so I'm going to say it's read only as true. So it's just going to print it on the page, just simply like that. Okay? Give everyone a second to make sure they're at this point. Cool. Next, what are we going to do about the other section layouts? Well, I don't want them to show when it's submitted, so I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before. Show when, not is submitted. So show this when uh, local bang is submitted is not true. Same thing for the button layout. You could copy it if you'd like. It's going to be the exact same thing. Just like that. Cool. So now we kind of have our structure set up. So at this point, I'm going to flip back into design mode. All right. So again, simple customer application. What I'd like is a text field. Nice little preview. You can see there what it kind of looks like. And then a paragraph field right under it. Look for that pink line there so you can put it in the same section. Double click the label on the text field. Let's call it name. And then you'll see this component configuration. I'm pretty zoomed in, but you can kind of see this on the right hand pane. Maybe I'll close some of these things up. And we're going to kind of scroll through here down to display value. Okay? So what value do we want to display and what do we want to save information into? Well, we created the local variables, local bang name, so name goes to name. One other thing is that for this, I'm going to scroll even further and look for required. I think the name field should be required because if you don't provide a name, the bot's not going to work later on. So let's mark that required. Next, let's double click the paragraph. Let's just call it details. I know it's description everywhere else, but maybe that makes more sense. I'm going to go to display value here on the paragraph field, just like the other one. But this time, I'm going to map it to the description local variable. Description. Description. Cool. Last thing we need to do, scroll, 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 because I'm zoomed in. Down here, you see the submit button? Just go ahead and click on that like, little pink button there so we can go ahead and modify this. So it's going to come up over here. You'll see there's this save value to. If I hover over that, I see the ability to edit as an expression. Okay? This is where that integration comes in that we spent so much time working on. Right? So bring back our friends, the curly brackets. I'm going to call this, first I'm going to enter rule. That's how I'm going to call the integration. Rule bang CA, and you can see the green there. 
right? Green, new app. Let me open that up. We provided two inputs for this integration. One of them was name. Uh, okay. Pretty zoomed in, but it should auto suggest for you. And we're going to map that to name. And then description. There we go. Call that description. Okay. So we've called our integration again that we created earlier. And the name and description you're filling out on the portal, we're going to put that in there at the time when you hit the submit button. Okay? But we wanted something else to happen too, right? We wanted the page to update so it says it's submitted and it's not showing you the form anymore. It'd be, a, it'd be annoying if you submitted it and it submitted, but the interface didn't change, right? Because you wouldn't know any better if something had happened, right? So here, I'm going to add a comma. One more thing I want to do in this exact same button press, I'm going to type a bank save, just like that. And it wants a target and a value. The target, what I want to save to, is that is submitted local variable. I want to update that. What do I want to update it to? True. It is submitted, so I want it to be true. Leave that up for a second there. Great. Scroll on down, find the OK button. And we're looking good. Save changes at the top. Let's go back to our application. Now we get to create the portal object. And for the Appian developers out there, if you're not familiar with the object, it is literally brand new. So it came out on Friday. So let's play around with it. I'm going to go to new. Portal. Let that pull up the configuration there. And one thing I want to show you guys, I know this is a pretty simple portal, but all the interfaces that you've come accustomed to that you can build in the Appian platform using sale can be brought to portals. It just might not be the best use of our 90 minutes. I'm going to call this portal CA new app. Display name, I'm going to make this a bit more like new customer application. It doesn't matter. This is non functional, but you know, I mean, I'm putting this out to my external users, so maybe I don't want it to just call it an app. And that's it. Create the portal. You didn't see the portal option? We can connect with you after. We did our best to upgrade everyone's sites to the latest version, but it's possible that some might have been missed. Yeah. But no worries. Everything we do with the portal can be tested from the interface directly. So if you go to the interface object, you can also see just the same. Let's save that, create that. All right. So first, let's go down here. And what is the portal going to be? It's asking for the content, OK? I know I'm a portal, but I don't know what I'm supposed to display. So I'm going to type CA underscore. Should be only one candidate here. New app portal. You can already get a preview to kind of see what the portal is going to look like, OK? Additionally, I want to, the portal to know what service account to use, OK? When you go and do these calls back to my Appian environment, what user are you going to assume? That would be CA portal, as you guys remember. Nothing else we need to configure there, but what we do want to make sure is that we denote the portal to be published. You can do all these configurations without publishing. And in fact, you can unpublish a portal. Say so you want to take it down, do some stuff on it, right? Flip that to published. Save the changes. And now the portal is going to automatically start publishing. So while that's running, I want to take a quick detour, because I was mentioning this isn't the most beautiful portal, but we have this site designed.appian.com. It's kind of an extension of our Appian documentation. 
And if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for some examples of the capabilities of Appian's user experience design, this is the place to go. Take a quick look here, the inspiration section. You see a lot of different cool interfaces people have built on Appian. One of which is this conference homepage. Seems thematic. This is an Appian interface. This is using all Appian and Sail components. So that's like the landing page, and here's the form page. This is an example of some of the experiences that just doing what we did, you can publish to the public internet for your end users to use and lace their interactions back into your business applications on the Appian platform. No web developers required. Also in here, they have some good patterns. I always love to go here for inspiration. Say you're starting on your next form. You want to kind of look at some of the different forms. Maybe you want to make a cuter form than we made today. And they'll give you the expression. They'll give you exactly how that's built so you can take that form and that structure, put it right into an interface, and get started. Highly encourage using this, especially if you want those really attractive Appian applications. Let's check in on our portal. It's published. This link is now blue. If I go here, I see my portal. All right. We tested on the integration. I'd like to test again, just to make sure. I'm going to type Appian Europe. OK, so this is a portal. It's running on its own. Remember, elastically scalable microservice architecture, separate from the platform. It's going to use that integration. There's a submitted. We all type together. All the way back on my other side of my tab, I'm going to go back to my little record list. And there's Appian Europe. The, go ahead. Exactly. So great question, right? Are they stuck? Is this like cached in their cookies? Not at all. I refresh it. We're back to normal. Cool. All right. To make sure we're good on time, I'm going to roll right in to the robotic process. So appreciate you guys hanging in there. I know it's a large session after lunch, but covering a lot of ground. We just went through portals, interface design integrations. Now we get to cover a whole new topic in robotic process automation. I'm sure much of the room has heard of RPA before and also Appian's RPA capabilities native to its platform. RPA is a great way to kind of mimic how humans interact with computers. And I almost like to think of it as um, the integration of last resort, right? In the sense of, if you can do an API integration like we did from Appian to Appian, you would do that. Because that's a direct, authenticated computer integration that's very easy to maintain. RPA, that's when you don't have an integration available. Maybe it's a mainframe system. Maybe it's a legacy web service that doesn't have any modern integrations. Appian doesn't leave that data on the table. You can build a robotic process to go and grab that information and still bring it in. And that's what we're going to do. The ESG score we want to pull in, Maybe it has an integration. I'm actually not sure. But let's assume it doesn't. How are we going to get that information into our process? We'll use the robot. Let's go back to the Appian Designer here. And I'm actually going to open, in the Site Navigator, Appian RPA. Caveat, again, up front, in order to follow along with this activity, you would have needed to do the setup instructions in your email to set up the resource. In the event that you haven't done those instructions yet, do not worry. Again, this is all being recorded. This is all easy to do asynchronously. For those who have not yet set up, just watch and enjoy. So here I am in Appian RPA. What I would like to do is create a new robotic process. Um, so from the robotic processes here, I'm just going to go ahead and click Create Robotic Process. Just do a blank one. What am I going to call this? 
So it's kind of betraying me there with the autofill, but it's CA get ESG score. Okay. For the permissions, I'm just going to go with the default for now, rule operation. Make sure I've got the repository set to the console there, all set. Click create. Give it a moment, it's going to download some of the robotic process information onto your computer. And then we're opened up into the robotic process designer. Cool. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to do a recording. So the task recorder is something that makes it very easy to build robotic processes. Because what it will do is it'll watch your movements and everything interacting with the computer and capture it and build the robotic process based on those interactions. The really cool thing is as of this year, it's not just browsers. You can also do this for Windows applications, things that are running on your operating machine and going between them from the browser to the local application, et cetera. Now, it's difficult to roll out the same desktop application to an entire conference, so we're not gonna be doing any desktop automation today, just in the browser. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click Start Recording. It's gonna select my Windows resource that I have. And what you'll notice is this pops up. I'm actually gonna wait a minute or so because it's already installed in my browser. A lot of you who are following along right now, you'll notice that you're kind of getting a set up the task recorder. It's running an install right now. So just give it a minute. Everyone should be able to get set up that way. All right. So hopefully everyone who has a task recorder set up, it's been installed in their browser, you're looking good. Select application. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna go ahead and search for it. I'm gonna use Chrome. Note, I think there is an issue if you're on a Mac computer with Chrome's latest driver and RPA, so just be warned if things get quirky and you have that combination, that's a known thing. Hopefully Chrome fixes it. But I went ahead and selected Chrome, and you see it opens up a new browser for me, okay? Now here's the thing. I didn't really think of a good way to beam the URL to everybody, and so I had to tra do a trade-off. Do we want a long URL that's easy to read or a short URL that's hard to read? I went with short, so I'll type it out, articulate it for anyone following along. Hopefully we'll get you there. The URL we're gonna be going to, HTTPS, I have it written down here, colon, slash, slash, AP, dot pn, that's all lowercase, slash three, capital F, capital W, capital I, lowercase m, j, capital J, and then uh, lowercase b. If it isn't obvious, this isn't something you have to do every time to make RPA work, just for the reasons of this activity, maybe it's more convenient. When I type that, you'll notice I won't go to that URL, this is just a shortened URL. What I'm gonna to go to is S&P site here. Now, one important thing to note is that if you notice it pinwheeling for a while, hit the escape key. I was playing with this site just a few days ago. There's some redirect that's failing in the background. I can't go and fix this site. So uh, you can hit the escape key and get it to stop doing some background load there. But what I would like to do is, I think, where is my RPA bot? It's somewhere around here. Uh, do, do, do. Mm-hmm. There you are. What are you doing back there? Okay. So, as you can see, it's captured opening my browser and taking you to the site you need to go to, right? So next thing I want to do is this accept cookies thing is going to get annoying. So I'm going to do that, and when I click it, you'll notice, right, it's recording my interaction automatically. And I can make adjustments to that while I'm recording. So I'll click back over here. That's not very readable to me, so I'll go ahead and do accept cookies. Again, not functional, just might make it easier to understand when you go back and look at it. I'm gonna scroll all the way down, all the way down. 
to where they put the search bar here. Search for a company's ESG score. Let's do Alphabet, just like that. And then you notice it's saying update value. So it's got the value that I put in there. It says Alphabet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this enter company name. And then look there. So we have an ESG score printed there. So that's great. That's great information as part of our KYC process to understand, according to S&P, what are we thinking about this environmental social governance score? But again, I don't know if there's an API for this, right? And a lot of times there isn't. So I can't bring this information. I have to go and tell my people, go and search this yourself and figure it out. Maybe go and manually enter it back in the system. With that being, we can kind of just combine it as part of the process. So here, if I hover over that, I see actions. And I have a few available, but I'm going to go ahead and do get attribute. And it's able to identify the value. Do you see that, the 46? But not just that. I don't want to just identify the value. I want to save it somewhere. I want to bring it into the process. So I'm going to click this plus button next to save into and create a new variable. Let's call this ESG score. Make it a number and create that. Call this get score. Why not? And then I'll go ahead and finish this. Click done. And we can call this whole group get ESG score. Awesome. Add group. Saving the recording. I'll close the recorder. Get back to that environment I minimized. And there we go. What I recorded has now been generated into the robotic process. But the great thing is, it's not your only way, it's not your only option to define and modify a robotic process in Appian. We can go ahead and make some tweaks now in the designer. One thing, for example, is you might have noticed that alphabet was hard-coded, okay? That's not very useful to me. I want to kind of make it a variable that I can provide to this robot. So over here in variables, I'm going to create a new one. Let's call it company name, just like that, text. And then this one, I'll give it an initial value, just my test value of alphabet, just like that. I'm going to call it a parameter. A parameter means that this is something I'm going to pass into the process from the start, okay? It's not something that only gets created as a part of the process. I want to feed company name at the start. So I'm going to mark it as a parameter. Create that. Okay, but now I need to slot it in. So thankfully, I labeled my stuff, so now I know where to go. Enter company name, and you see here, it says ABC, alphabet there. Uh, I'm going to switch that to variable and make this company name. So now instead of just some hard-coded value, whatever I provide into this process, that's the name it's going to take into there. Additionally, that search bar was so far down on the page, I'd like to see it scroll to the element before it actually does the interaction. At least let's see it, right? A few other things. Um, we don't have the enter press we had there, and there was no search button, so I'm going to add that in. So if I search in the palette here on the left for press keyboard shortcuts, I can grab this and drop it right after enter company name, okay? And what are we going to call this? Maybe search company, right? Enter the company name. Now I want to press enter to search it. So go to additional keys. This is literally the robot emulating me interacting with the keyboard, pressing keys on the keyboard just like a human does. And then lastly, it looks like I forgot to do the close browser. No worries. Always good to kind of do that here. Now, one thing that we're not going to get into with this activity, because this is a short amount of time, is if you were to set this up probably for your production instance, what you'd like to do is move the opening browser accepting cookies into that setup section up top. So that's part of getting set up. And what you could do, instead of passing one company name, why not 100, right? And then this group, this group, you can set it to loop. You can just run this over and over and over again for an array 
of company names, pull back all that information very efficiently. Okay? Beyond the scope for this activity, but just know that it's there. All right. So I think we covered the bases there. Let's see if this is working for us. Save changes, execute. It's got my company name pre-filled there. I'm gonna test it, see what it does. Cool, accepts the cookies, scrolls down, enters alphabet, clicks enter, there's the ESG score, and it pulls it, you see there? So it got the information off of the website. No integration required, just straight scraped it off, no coding, no need to know all of your browser information and everything like that. This is now ready for us to incorporate into the process. Cool, all right. Um, I think we are doing pretty good on time. I can have time for one, maybe two questions. Go ahead. Would this work on sort of like a headless browser? A headless browser? That's a good question. I know that you can sometimes interface with lower level concepts in the browser, um, but through the lens of the task recorder, I don't think so. That's a good question, though. I'll take that back and see if I can get information around headless browsers. But I do know when it comes to things printed on the page, like a browser, as well as things as far as desktop apps, that is where kind of the recording and everything becomes really strong. And then if you start talking about things that might not be part of this general recording, we actually make certain connected systems available for you to natively connect to things like mainframes or you know, SAP, like legacy SAP applications, et cetera, to connect natively to those as well. But it's a good question. I'll have to circle back with you. Go ahead. What is the best option to trigger this The best option to trigger it? When a new record is uh, created uh, from the portal, then we need to trigger the uh, robot, or we need to wait some schedule, like wait like 10 or more records is recorded, and then you know run the uh, robot automation. That's a great question. And it might be actually looking ahead, right? Because we're gonna see how we're gonna trigger this as part of the process. The fact of the matter is, is that when you think about your kind of strategy of systems, right? A lot of times a lot of these things feel disconnected or you have to kind of like web them all together, have them all talking to each other. But with Appian, these technologies like robotic process automation, intelligent document processing, business rules, they kind of are native into the platform. And the best way to orchestrate all of them is from a Appian process model through workflow. You put your robotic process onto the workflow. You put your intelligent document processing on the workflow. You put your user input tasks integrations, everything can be put on the same workflow. You can visualize the whole thing right there. The best part about that too is we were kind of looking at the records for a little bit. You might hear the concept of data fabric being touched on at this conference. With Appian being able to connect all this different data together, it means every single piece of your process, your workflow technology, can also work with every single piece of your data. All of that kind of driven through the workflow to make the business process work, okay? So it's a great question. We'll actually be going to the workflow next, and we'll see how we lace this in to the portal started process. Awesome. Okay. Let's go back to Appian Designer here. Now, first things first, before we go right into the process model that was generated earlier, we're gonna create actually another integration object. So if I find my pointer there, I'll go to new, scroll down, integration. This one, um, community edition environments uh, have a preloaded connector there for Appy and RPA. So you don't have to get that set up every time you're working with RPA. And so we're gonna select that DD Appy and RPA connected system there. And then we're gonna tell it to do the operation of executing the robotic process. So I'm gonna call this CA get ESG score. That's all I need. Click create. Pop up blocked. Let's try that again. 
Cool. All right. Now it wants me to select which robotic process. I have one, so that makes it easy. Most likely you can do first available resource. I'll just specify mine. Um, and now, if you remember back to the integration that's powering our portal, this is going to be great because this is going to allow us to work across our different interface expressions, et cetera, just like we did with the other integration, but instead using the robot. OK? So just like the other integration, I need a rule input. So I'm going to open up the rule inputs here. A little squished on the smaller screen, but that's OK. Create a new one with the plus button up there. Call this company name. Company name. Add type text. So now we have a company name. And that input's going to make a ton of sense, because if I scroll down, it's looking for a company name. Because I set that as a parameter for the robot. You can provide company name at the start. So right now it says alphabet. Again, that doesn't help me. So I'm going to edit as expression, delete that out, and do company name, just like that. Click OK. And click Save Changes. And this is going to allow us, just like we did with the integration, to work with the bot across Appian. Let's go back to the application. After such a long journey, we actually get to go back to that process model we generated all that time ago, right? See a new app. Let's open that. Now, for those of you who didn't watch the release notes, this might come as a shock. It got a redesign, right? Those of you who have been working with process modeler before, it did not look like this a minute ago, and now it does, so we may rejoice. Cool. Let's go ahead and make room for where we're going to put this. I'm going to highlight, write records and node. Just use my arrow key and push those off to the side. Make space for the robot. In the search panel over here, I'm going to search robot and get this execute robotic process, just like that. Let's call it something, get ESG score. Now, I'm not going to take the time in this presentation to talk about activity chaining, but one thing that's important is that you don't want to chain into a robot, OK? Make a lot more sense with more explanation. But bottom line, let's double click on that arrow and just disable activity chaining like that. Cool. Double click on the robot. Setup. So which robot? So if I type CA, there's my get ESG score, integration. And now I'm going to go to data. So what is the company name that I want to feed into the robot. It's the company name that the end user fills out on the portal, right? So if I go into this value dropdown here, I can see that record that we set up before, and I see name. So what they fill out in the portal, we're going to pass that right into the robot. Now, that's the input, but I'd like to get something out of this as well. So let's go to outputs. I'm going to create a new custom output. And then over here, let's click that pencil and open the expression editor. So to get that output, I'm going to use ACBang variables to access the different variables that the robot has. And then I can type dot ESG score. So of the variables of the robot, I want its ESG score. Close that. Where do I want to save that to? Record, ESG score. Just like that. All right. Hit OK. And then save and publish. So while this has been a lot of app for the amount of time, but we're finally there, we can test the A to the Z. Back to my portal. 
Don't think I need to refresh, but why not? Type alphabet and details, maybe soup. And submit that. I'm going to go hands off because if I did things correctly, I'm going to lose control of my computer for a second while the bot runs. So that information we provided into the portal is now what's coming in here to drive the robotic process. And if it wasn't clear, this isn't going to run on your computer in production. You'd have a virtual machine or something, right? Off in the back room. Submit it. All right. Moment of truth. I go here. The ESG score is now in my table. I have enriched the KYC process with ESG information published by S&P about the company. This is one example. But if you think about the integration capabilities of Appian, the data fabric capabilities of Appian, and the automation capabilities of Appian, this could be any amount of information. Whether it's sitting out there on the web, stuck in a legacy system, unstructured on a document, all of that can be pulled into the workflow and used just like the information they key in at the form. That's everything I have to share.